Listen, there's only two moments in my life where I've been really embarrassed to be an American. One of them is when we elected Donald Trump, and the second is the way that we are handling the coronavirus outbreak, and there are people like Dr. Phil that are making this situation so much worse with pure ignorance and this lack of caring for the situation that's really going on. What's up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, no, my channel isn't all political or anything like that. It's actually about mental health. And today we're gonna be talking a, a, a bit about mental health. But anyways, if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell, all right? So I really, really wanted to make this video. I saw Dr. Phil was trending on Twitter and it's because he made some really dumb comments on Fox News about prioritizing mental health in the time of the coronavirus pandemic. And yes, we need to take care of our mental health. This is gonna have some very long-term effects, but not at the cost of thousands of more lives. And it might get even worse than that, all right? Um, for those of you who watch Dr. Mike or those of you who don't, go check out his video. He actually responded to some mainstream doctors who have gotten a lot of backlash for their comments on coronavirus. He didn't cover Dr. Phil because this is kind of newer, but he talked about that quack Dr. Oz. Um, also, Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew, uh, I cut him a little slack because it was in the earlier stages um, of this thing and he's recently apologized for it. Um, anyways, go check out Dr. Mike's video. But yeah, now Dr. Phil is is trying to advocate that we should reopen the country because of people's mental health. And <laughs> it is just one of the most ridiculous things. I'm gonna break that down a little bit, but first I wanna to talk to you about the severity of this thing and how poorly the United States has clearly been handling this situation, okay? So in my opinion, like, you know, I, I, I love, I love the United States, right? When you like grow up in school and you learn about like, you know, like the Revolutionary War and us like, you know, making this country and like, you know, our, our founding fathers and all that, you're like, yeah, being an American is dope, right? And then like you go on to like the, you know, early 20th century and we're like winning wars and stuff. And then the whole Vietnam thing happened, not so great. But anyways, I feel like we've, gotten this huge ego as Americans. Like we are the smartest, we are the best, we do everything right, you know what I mean? And we refuse to look to other countries and say, oh wait, maybe they're doing something a little bit better than us and we should, we should look at that real quick. Like this is the way I try to live my life. If I see somebody doing better than me, I analyze it. I'm like, okay, why are they doing better than me? What are they doing that I'm not doing? Where am I falling short? Am I doing really dumb things like, because a lot of things screwed up in my life are because I'm making really dumb decisions. So I need to look at people who are doing better and say, okay, how do I model what I'm doing after that? But it seems like as a country, we don't do that, okay? So let me toss this up on the screen real quick. As of today, April 17th, 2020, these are the current numbers, okay? These are the current numbers for all the major countries in the world and who's been affected by the coronavirus outbreak. Look at this. The United States has 678,000 cases. 678,000 cases. The next closest, the next closest is less than a third of that. Spain with 184,000 cases. Okay, look at the death tolls. We have 34,641 right? Next one is Spain with 19,315, okay? So take a look at this list. Now, I understand, you know, sometimes we want to be the best at everything, but this is not something we should be being the best at, is having the most cases in the entire world. Clearly, we're not doing something right, okay? Now, a lot of, you know, governors, a lot of mayors, a lot of local governments have been 
taking this thing seriously and they've been implementing stay at home orders. Like, I don't think, you know, the Nevada governor gets enough credit. Um, Steve Sislak, he's been killing it with like, you know, um, the way he's handling this and, you know, encouraging us to stay at home and, you know, uh, wanting non-essential businesses to shut down. And listen, I get it. I have so many friends. I have so many friends who are in like the casino industry, not just, you know, not like dealing blackjack or anything like that, but a lot of people work at casinos in the various jobs, right? They work at the restaurants inside of the casinos. They, you know, they work maintenance or repairs or whatever. I have friends who work construction. Like I get it. I have so many people who have been affected by this. And we have our current mayor of Las Vegas. She's trying to be like, yo, let's reopen these casinos. Like. This whole time, like ever since this whole outbreak started, I've been baffled that like Las Vegas wasn't this epicenter of spreading the virus because we have so many people coming in and out. But I think we responded quick enough where that wasn't so much the case, okay? But anyways, I was watching Philip DeFranco yesterday and people in Michigan are losing their minds wanting the state to reopen, right? And they did this huge protest. So bear with me, I'm gonna show this entire clip that Philip DeFranco used of this healthcare worker talking about this protest because I wanna show you the whole thing because this dude, he, he gets it. How can I do my job if y'all idiots are blocking up the ways to get to the hospital? There are people dying every minute. And you guys, Trump supporters, want to block up everything and don't care about nobody else. What if it was your mother? What if it was your father? What if your infant son or daughter gets sick? This is ridiculous. It is unfair for the people that have to go to work every single day, especially in the hospital, to do their job. If y'all don't take y'all asses home, this is what I'm mad about. All y'all want to sit down there and pump your horn, hang out the window, throw your flag out because y'all don't like what somebody told y'all to do? Y'all some idiots. All right, so now that I've set the stage for you, what did Dr. Phil say? What did Dr. Phil say? Okay, Fox News brought him on to talk about how, you know, the quarantine and businesses shutting down is affecting mental health. All right. And what we need to understand, obviously, is news organizations, and although I'm more liberal leaning, like I'm very aware of what's going on. News organizations have their biases, their liberal or uh, conservative leanings, and they're going to bring people on who agree with them. All right. Or they're going to try to like make the other side like look dumb or whatever. And we re need to realize that, okay, first and foremost, so we understand what we're consuming. So Fox News is going to bring people on who want to reopen the, com uh, the country for the economy and everything like that. But anyways, they brought Dr. Phil on to talk about the mental health effects of this situation. Thank you for giving a voice to this because it's so very important. This is invisible. I can't show you an x-ray of depression. I can't show you an x-ray of anxiety. But the fact of the matter is, the longer this lockdown goes on, the more vulnerable people get. And it's like there's a tipping point. There's a point at which people start having enough problems in lockdown that it will actually create more destruction and actually more death across time than the actual virus will itself. 250 people a year die from poverty. And the poverty line is getting such that more and more people are going to fall below that because the economy is crashing around us. And they're doing that because people are dying from the coronavirus. I get that. But look, the fact of the matter is we have people dying. 45,000 people a year die from automobile accidents, 480,000 from cigarettes, 360,000 a year from swimming pools. But we don't shut the country down for that. But yet we're doing it for this. And the fallout is going to last for years because people's lives are being destroyed. And All right, the first thing that I want to address is this is just the worst, the worst comparison ever. And this is something that people are constantly using. Dr. Phil was saying how many people die in car crashes or swimming pool accidents and everything like that. And we don't shut down the country because of that. Like this is just the most selfish, self-centered, ignorant statement I've ever heard, okay? When somebody drowns in a pool, it doesn't potentially infect 
everybody in their life that makes them more susceptible to drown in the pool, okay? A pool drowning is not contagious, all right? If your friend gets into a car accident and then comes over to your house, everybody in your house is not now going to get into a car accident, all right? Like this type of comparison is just the app absolute worse. You cannot compare this virus to any other type of death toll because those tolls are not contagious, okay? They are not extremely contagious either, okay? So I think we need to make that very clear. So if you see someone using this argument, please remind them that those death tolls are not contagious and are not being passed from human to human, okay? It is completely different. And it pains me because it feels like people like Dr. Phil and others aren't going to take this seriously until the deaths are like quadruple what the other annual deaths are. And that is some scary stuff right there, okay? So then he talks about the mental health aspect of this and yes, Trust me, I get it. This is one of the reasons why I've made so many videos about dealing with your mental health during the outbreak, okay? Like, this is this is so, such a real thing. Like, I can't even express it. There are going to be long-term effects. Like, thinking about our healthcare workers, I, I, I feel a lot of people are gonna start struggling with symptoms of trauma. I have a feeling that we're gonna see a spike in uh, substance abuse disorders right? People trying to self-medicate because of, you know, not only the trauma of working in the healthcare industry, but also a lot of people during this poor economic time who are going to be self-medicating their anxiety, their depression. And then that abuse turns into dependence, which turns into an addiction. And these are going to be long lasting effects. I absolutely agree. But that does not mean we should reopen the com uh, country and let tons of more people die. That is not the way we handle this situation. What people like Dr. Phil need to be doing, what a lot of people need to start doing, is helping to teach people how to manage their mental health during this time, rather than being like, well, you're gonna have poor mental health, so we might as well just open the country again and let everybody get infected. Like, that's not the way to do it. We need to give people the tools they need to start managing their mental health. Now, don't get me wrong. One primary contributor to poor mental health is financial issues like that's for real right if you're having financial struggles you're going to experience anxiety you might experience some depression like this is just the reality of the situation so i'm not saying like the government doesn't need to start figuring this stuff out start figuring stuff out for small business owners and for you know uh, uh just the average american household who is struggling right now like i am one of the millions of people where my stimulus check didn't come through but i'm very fortunate that i have a job where i can work from home you know what i mean so that money is pretty much just going into savings just in case anything happens with my job because you never know. Like right now, you never know. So trust me, I get it that financial issues can cause poor mental health. But again, this is not at the cost of losing lives, okay? So the, the thing that bothers me the most about this whole thing, the whole thing and people trying to reopen the country and everything like that and being upset, you know, like on the Philip DeFranco episode yesterday, like there was this woman like, we can't, we can't go out and get our hair done and stuff like that. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Are you absolutely kidding me right now? Like, I hate to burst your bubble, anybody out there who's watching this, but check it out. Part of being a grown up is doing some things that you don't want to do, okay? Like, I I look at this and I see so many people, so many people just like, I don't want to do this. I don't, this is unfair. Like, what? Be an adult and realize what's happening and there are certain things that we have to do in order to save lives, all right? So, we need to start teaching people how to manage their mental health during this time and figuring out what they can and can't control, okay? There are so many opportunities and so many resources out there, okay, where you can 
figure out ways to bring in some extra income. And listen, listen to me right now. If you need help figuring out ways to make some extra income right now, DM me at The Rewired Soul on Instagram or Twitter. Email me, therewiredsoul at gmail.com. I will talk to you. I will try to help you figure things out. Because check it out. When I first got sober, I was, I was flat broke. I had no money. I had like two pairs of clothes. Okay, my mom was giving me a $40 a week allowance, which only paid for my cigarettes. Like, I had nothing. And my life was like that for a very long time. We're talking years, years that I was flat broke. Like, I'm talking my grocery store shopping was at the dollar store with a food stamp card, okay? So if you need help figuring out how to survive this thing while broke, hit me up. All right, but I'll also try to help you figure out other ways to bring in some extra income. One thing that I think that we really need to start working on now more than ever is looking at the things that we want and what we need. All right, like I know a lot of people right now, a lot of their anxiety and depression is, and this isn't all, this isn't all, so let me make it very clear. But if we can start looking at these little bits and pieces, like we can start improving our mental and emotional well-being. But looking at what we want versus what we need, okay? Like now's the time to start auditing our lives and saying, okay, how much stuff do I own that I don't really need? What things can I get rid of? What things can I sell? Why do I have so much stuff, right? How many, how many subscription services am I signed up to that I don't really need? What are the things that I'm making payments on that I don't really need, right? Like, we need to address that stuff because so many of us, we buy things that we don't need. We buy things to show people, you know, our status in life. You know we do that, right? From the clothes we wear to the things that we put in our house and all that. We need to start looking at that stuff right now because I'm telling you, like, now, now the place I'm at in my life, like, I don't need a damn thing. Like, I don't need squat. I can look around and I'm like, okay, cool. These are like essential things. Like I don't have anything fancy. Like, yeah, I have some like video games and that's it. But if push came to shove and I had to get rid of them, peace out. You know, those are luxury items, right? So if we can start honing in on the essentials, that'll help get rid of some of the stresses, all right? But the last thing that I wanna talk about is episodic depression and anxiety. And that's something that upsets me where Dr. Phil, you know, Mr. Psychologist man, doesn't discuss this. A lot of people struggling with these mental health issues right now, like this is episodic, okay? What's episodic mean? All right, this isn't a biological issue. This is not, you know, based on your genetics. It could be for some, right? But a lot of people who are just now experiencing depression and anxiety, it's because of, it's because of the life circumstances that are happening right now. And that's great news. You know why? Because it's going to pass. And when it passes, you're going to be stronger. You're going to be more resilient. Okay. Like I know, I know from the depths of my soul that we're going to get through this and things are going to go back to normal. Okay. But the way that's going to happen is by not prolonging this thing and losing more lives. Right. Like what do you think is going to affect someone's mental health more? Okay, having financial struggles or losing a family member because they didn't want to abide by these, you know, orders to stay inside, right? Like I would much rather, I would much rather figure out a way to give my parents money, right? Like I will do, I would figure out just about anything. I'd rather do that than be like, Hey, mom and dad, just go outside, you know, screw this, you know, let's, let's risk the whole outbreak thing and risk you infecting the rest of our family. Let's risk that. Like, I would rather figure out a way to help them out financially than put their lives at risk because their lives are more valuable than that. You know what I'm saying? So just remember, there are things that you could be doing right now to improve your mental health. I have so many videos right now, so many videos, books you could read, practices you could do, and I am just one dude. There are so many psychologists and therapists and everybody just coming together to provide mental health resources to help you get through this difficult time. And again, feel free to DM me or email me anytime if you need to talk and figure some stuff out, all right? Because as somebody who has come from the bottom, I've had to figure a lot of stuff out to get through times like this. And, you know, to be honest, I'm grateful that I had to go through that because I'm not nearly as worried because I know, I know 
what I can get through. And if I can do anything, I wanna use my experience to give some of you guys hope that you can get through it too. All right. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books at TheRewiredSoul.com and the merch from the merch store. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.